Hello, my name is Lauren. I'm going to be talking to you today about how you can use both existing and new tools on Google Play to improve your quality and your ROI on Play. Google Play gives you access to billions of people distributed across many countries and regions, many languages, and on many different device models. But your true measure of opportunity on Google Play depends on what I like to call your quality reach, the number of users who can not only install and use your app, but who will also have a good experience when they do so. When you have quality reach, your engineering efforts, marketing budgets, and growth strategy can be lined up to reinforce each other. In other words, you acquire users for whom your app works well. And because it works well for these users, your engagement and retention strategies will be more effective and have a higher return on investment. What if you have poor quality reach? By which I mean, your app is available to and being installed by users who experience poor stability and performance when they use it. It's going to be much harder for you to engage and retain users if you can't give them a good experience. So if you spent to acquire these users in the first place, you're likely to be seeing a poor return on that investment. But there's another consequence. Your discoverability and conversion on play can be affected by both your Android Vitals metrics and your ratings. So if you have a lot of users with poor quality reach, this could hurt your ability to acquire new users, even those who would have had a good experience. This is why reach and quality are so foundational to your success on Google Play. But what do you actually do differently knowing this? And how do you build a business case to do it? Let me start by talking briefly about how quality is measured today and some new features that will be relevant. This isn't a technical talk, but it's important for non-technical users to have this context so you understand what is possible. Android Vitals is your destination on play to monitor and improve the technical quality of your app as it's being used by real users. It's one of our most established products used by nearly 70% of our top 1,000 developers. Android Vitals reports on a number of aspects of technical quality, including stability, where we report both crashes and ANRs. And beyond stability, it also covers performance, battery usage, and permissions. It's a very important dashboard because it tells you how Google Play evaluates your quality. So we highly recommend that both development and product teams monitor Android Vitals on a regular basis, particularly around app updates, whether these are being made through new releases to the store or through server-side updates. And you can set up alerts as well to respond to new and emerging issues as quickly as possible. One of the things we've often heard from developers is the desire to use Android Vitals outside Play Console. For instance, to pull the data into your own dashboards, to join it with other data sets, or to incorporate into your own workflows for troubleshooting and releases. We've listened to this feedback, and I'm very pleased to tell you that we have just launched a new developer reporting API. This gives you programmatic access to all four Core Vitals metrics and issues data. This includes crash and ANR rates, counts, clusters, and stack traces and it gives you three years of history. We hope this unblocks developers to be more productive and build the quality insights that they need to inform their investment decisions. Another exciting new release to call out is that Vitals now gives you country breakdowns of all your metrics. In addition to breakdowns, you can also filter metrics by country. If your app is available in multiple locations and you have different strategies or app experiences by market, or even it's just that your users monetize differently, then understanding metrics at country level is important for both troubleshooting and prioritization. And you can get all this new country data in the API as well as the UI. Now I've talked about how you measure your app quality on play, let me talk about how you build the business case to invest in it. There are three main decisions where it's important to think about the quality business case. The first is what device specs you build for and target when you first launch your app, and not only at launch, but over time, how this might change. 
Next is geographies. This is about what countries, languages, or localization you offer. Thirdly, there's testing and optimization. This is what aspects of quality you plan for and prioritize during development, as well as what types of issue you do or don't choose to address post-launch. The key thing here is that these decisions are all connected. It's not each individual decision that determines your quality reach, it's the combination of all of them together. For example, if your app is reaching many users on old versions of Android, but you don't test or optimize your app for these older versions, then you're setting yourself up for low quality reach. You can solve this in one of two ways. You can change your targeting to exclude these older versions, or you can invest in improving your app's performance. Both of these would reduce your low quality reach, but one of them also reduces your total potential user base on play, and hence your total long-term ROI. So let's say you want to build a business case to make the right decision here. How do you do that? This is what Reach and Devices is for. Reach and Devices is designed to help you make trade-offs and build business cases for decisions like what devices to target, which countries or regions to launch in, and what testing to do. It allows you to look at distributions of your user metrics and your issue metrics across device specs like Android version or RAM. These are the attributes that will affect your app's performance and how you build it. You can compare your own data with peers to spot opportunities. You can also use your peer data to plan for quality reach for your next app before you start development. And you get country filters for more precise launch and expansion planning. Finally, for maximum flexibility, you can export all of this data to join it with other data that you may have and for additional bespoke analysis. Let me give you an example. Let's say you already have an app and you're trying to figure out how to grow your user base and deliver quality experiences. When you go into the Reach in Devices overview page, you can choose to look at two metrics at the same time. I've already mentioned that Reach in Devices covers both user metrics and issue metrics. Since we're talking about optimization, we want to have an issue metric in the mix. But since you want to build a business case, we also want to include some measure of opportunity, which requires some type of user metric. Let's pick ANR rate as the issue metric and installs for the user or opportunity metric. You'll then see a series of views on the page showing both these metrics broken out by different device dimensions. Android version and RAM are the ones you can just about see in this screenshot, but if you keep scrolling, you'll find many others. Let me zoom in a bit on the RAM section. Here's just the ANR rate metric in the overview page. You see a summary of the top RAM buckets by ANRs on the left and some trends on the right. The blue bar is the data for your app in the left-hand chart. The orange is the data for your peers. I'll talk about this in a minute. I want to zoom in a bit first. Since we're interested in optimization opportunities, top three is a bit limited. So let's click on Explore to go deeper. Here you see the chart blown up bigger. As before, the dark blue bar is your app's ANR rate. So according to this chart, for my app, I have the highest ANR rate on one and a half to two gigs RAM at over 5%. Now let me talk a bit more about the orange bar. I mentioned this is the peer's median. Think of this as a benchmark that you can use when analyzing your ANR distribution. It reflects the median ANR rate for an anonymous set of apps in whatever peer group category you choose. When you change the category, which isn't shown on this slide, the orange bars will change. Note that peer groups are anonymous. This means you can't see or change the individual apps in the group. In this case, my app is a social app, so I've picked social as the peer group category. This means the orange bar represents the median ANR rate for an anonymous set of top social apps. Another thing to mention is that my app is only available in Brazil today. Therefore, to ensure a like-for-like -like comparison with my peers, I'll filter for Brazil in the country filter to ensure that my peer set data is limited to Brazil as well. Having done this, I can now see that my ANR rate on low RAM looks quite a bit higher than my peers. This doesn't seem great. 
And another thing to call out is the third light blue bar on the chart, which is connected to the right-hand axis. This indicates the number of sessions with ANRs on this RAM bucket. So it takes into account not only my app's ANR rate, but also the number of users I have. From this blue bar, I can see that the absolute number of ANRs in this one and a half to two gig RAM segment is pretty high, meaning that this is contributing a lot to my app's overall ANR rate. Taken together, it seems like this ANR rate is concerning from a technical perspective. What about from a business perspective? To answer this, let's turn also to the installs metric that we chose alongside ANR rate. Here, you can really start to see the power of reach and devices. I'm showing the same RAM categories as on the ANR chart, and now you can see that my install base on low RAM looks quite a bit higher than my peers. I'm at 29%, and they're at 19. So even though I have a very high ANR rate, I also have a high number of users relative to my peers. These users are not getting a good experience compared to what they would have on another app. That can't be helping my ratings, and that's something I could check. I might be at risk of losing them, and I might get even more engagement or installs if I fixed this. So at this point, you now have both business and technical information to start to make a call on what to do. To summarize, I've got nearly 30% of users on this low RAM segment. I have a disproportionately high ANR rate, which is likely affecting not only these users, but also the overall discoverability of my app. And based on this, it seems like I've got a pretty strong case to invest some time in reducing ANRs on low RAM devices. That's one example of how you can use reach in devices to identify opportunities and justify your investments. Let me give you one more. This time you're building your social app from scratch and you want to launch it in Brazil, but you don't know Brazil well. You want to figure out a set of minimum device specs that will allow you to achieve your growth objectives, but still have it run well on as many devices as possible. Here, what you can see is the install base by RAM for social apps in Brazil. At this point, you don't have an app, so there is no blue bar, but you use the peer set data to start to get a sense of the opportunity. From this, you can see that three to four gigabyte devices are the most common, but one and a half to two gigs are pretty prevalent too. Indeed, it's the same 19% figure we saw earlier. So now you can think about how much it would cost to support this spec and whether it's worth it for those additional users. Here's where I want to talk about one additional new feature in Reach and Devices that could help with this assessment. So far, I've just used installs as a measure of opportunity, whether that's your own installs or your peers. But what if your primary focus is not installs, but revenue? If you're monetizing through subscriptions or paid apps, you probably don't see all installs as equal. You'll consider your paying users differently from your non-paying users. And within your paying users, you may even have different tiers of spend or different strategies for each tier. If this rings true for you, then you should use the new revenue metrics in Reach and Devices instead of installs. These metrics can help you make decisions from a revenue perspective. For example, how much of my revenue is affected by this technical issue? What's the revenue impact of changing my min spec? What's the subscription revenue potential of this segment? So in the example I was talking through about whether you should support low RAM devices, you can look at the revenue as well as the user base to make this decision if your app is monetizing through Play. In addition to revenue metrics, you can also explore revenue growth both rate and absolute growth. This is important if you're planning for the long term. Maybe your social app isn't going to launch until a year from now. One nice feature of all the metrics in Reach and Devices is that you can customize them to suit your needs. What you can tweak depends on the metric you choose. For example, if you pick revenue, you can choose what types of revenue are included and what time period of revenue you want to aggregate over. If you select revenue growth, you can specify the period of time over which you want to calculate that growth, monthly, quarterly, or even yearly. So this means you can tailor your business case to your specific objectives and time horizons. Another new feature is the ability to see your install, revenue, and issue metrics broken out by device type. 
You can also use filters to focus on a single device type at a time. This is part of our broader efforts to help developers to build, publish, and manage their apps across different platforms, aligned with Android's Better Together initiative. And if you're interested in reaching users beyond mobile, you'll see that Reach and Devices allows for you to understand and plan for Google Play on tablets and wearables. Okay, so let me just recap what we've covered. I started by talking about quality reach, which is the number of users who can not only install and use your app, but who have a good experience when they do so. I also explained why quality reach is not enough. You also need to minimize your low quality reach. Then I talked about Android Vitals, your destination to monitor your app's quality for real users. You can now access Vitals through an API as well as the Play Console. Finally, I gave you a walkthrough of reach in devices, including the new revenue metrics. And I showed how you can use it to build a business case for quality wherever you are in your life cycle. I hope it was useful. Thank you for listening and check out the resources in the description if you want to learn more.